One of the things that happens after six months of being away is we like have to sort of reassess the apartment and like sort of move back in essentially. This morning we're hanging art. So I ordered this tapestry like a million years ago and it took a really long time to get it here. So basically I've been waiting for this thing for like forever. How's that? Finally getting it up in the wall. Okay, so how are you securing this to the wall? Stickies and zip ties. So this happens when I come home from a trip. I am not a great unpacker and I can very easily leave a suitcase like this for quite actually months if it wasn't in Max's office and you have to look at it all the time. So I'm gonna have to do something about this today. What you got there, babe? Well, I am gonna start my pilot license course tomorrow and these are the books for it. Very exciting stuff. When you're flying a plane, you have to like measure the clouds. Pilot logbook. Nice. Principle of a flight, that'll help. <laughs> Navigation will also help. Holy shit, there's a lot of books. VFR communication, Alpha Bravo Charlie. Human performance. <laughs> Don't need that one. We've been up since four, getting my second wind after I made my favorite coffee. I didn't start drinking coffee until like my late 30s. So I've really only been drinking coffee for like five years, but oh my God, am I into it now? I'm gonna make another video about all my favorite things in my house. I'm gonna include that coffee machine that you saw me just using. At first I was a little intimidated by it, but after using it like two or three times, I understood how it worked and it makes such a superior cup of coffee. And my big inspiration for getting that actually in the first place was to not be producing so many of those like used Nespresso capsules. Cause I had an espresso machine before. This is great cause you just dump the beans right in the top. So you're eliminating that waste. It's a little bit extra work. Like you have to clean out the part where the espresso grounds go every time, but like a little like ritual of my day. Now I am sitting at my favorite place to work on my computer in the whole house at the dining room table. I have a little office, but I like sitting here. I sit in my office when I have to do super heady work, when I have to like really focus, but I like to sit here when I'm feeling a little bit more cash. And I am now looking through a bunch of Portuguese golden visas, like investment law firm services, because I am most likely going to get a Portuguese golden visa because I hold a British passport. And since Brexit, I no longer have an EU passport. And after like really meditating on it, it's true that I prefer Europe as my base and I no longer have freedom of movement in Europe. So I sort of like have curated my life. I don't just stay with sort of like the culture I was born into or the, you know, I've really like shopped around for the kind of life I want. And I might make a whole other video based on that for those of you guys that are interested. Yeah, so citizenship by investment is like pretty big business. So there's a lot of law firms and services that offer that. And I'm just shopping around now for the one I wanna use. When I made my first million, it was a really big wake up call to me that I had to start thinking like somebody that had a lot of money <laughs> because, oh my God, when you get your first tax bill after you've made your first million, that was a wake up call for me. So instead of just sort of suffering that reality, I started thinking bigger and looking at what else was possible. And there are many, many, many extremely legal ways to curate, craft, 
your personal residence, your tax residence, your way that your company structures work. So yeah, the world is our oyster. Of course, right now during the whole pandemic, they're trying to not make the world your oyster, but in reality, there's still a huge amount of freedom and choice. So yeah, I'm gonna check out what kind of golden visa possibilities there are for me and enjoy my afternoon coffee. Figuring out how to drive again after six months of not driving. I literally just got on the highway. I was like, how does this work? <laughs> I was like, right, check the speed limit. Stay in your lane. A couple more days of sleep and I should be right. Well, I'm not fully rested yet. It's only been a day since we've been back. But right now we're down in Engelvalm. Engelvalm, which is like this natural farm where they have these beautiful little rooter tutors. The most southern state of Sweden is Skåne, and it's really flat and agricultural, and that's where we live. There's like no health food stores in Sweden really, which I find a little disconcerting. But then in the normal grocery stores, they have like a large like ecological selection. And then you have all these like farms scattered around that like specialize. So this started out as like a pork farm, but then it turned into like, they have a whole bunch of different animals, but they also have like their own farm, like to restaurant garden. And they do all their preserves and it's very European darling. In a touch, show my gratitude. Welcome in to Svalje. Is Svalje the area or is Svensk Svenska is Sweden, right? Svenska is Swedish, Svalje is Sweden. Shannon's rocking her denim today. Yeah. The reason we came down here is because we had to pick up our car too, because it was parked at our friend Lisa's house. But she lives down in Helveken. And then she told us to come to this happy pig farm, and that's why we're here. And now we're gonna go pick up three, four, five boxes that got sent back here like over the last six months with clothes, crystals, all sorts of stuff that we have waiting for us. So, you know, getting ourselves organized. House is a mess. Spring, but, spring is coming. We totally miss winter. Like we just arrived and there's leaves on the trees. So it's, it's beautiful. And the, I, what I'm loving is like the coolness in the air. Cause cool, fresh air. Queensland, no cool fresh air. Mexico, no cool fresh air. Costa Rica, no cool fresh air. Texas, no cool fresh air. But I love that about Europe. The coolness and the smell of the trees in spring. Okay, you guys, welcome to Club Consciousness. May, how does it get better than this? Like, what do you desire? You know, what do you want to create? What are you curious about? Are you happy with the level of change and the speed at which you're achieving and accomplishing what you desire to accomplish? The sky turns gray against the fiery display of red and golden hues like the day I felt for you so what will you do when the sun begins to fall I'm waiting here for you won't you answer my call don't you want to get cozy with me we'll dive into a reverie family ghost shirt and action one of the big questions or actually the question i get asked the most i don't know if you get asked this is like why did we choose sweden and why yes. did we choose valmo i get that question too often yeah good question i think a lot of my life is stuff that doesn't really make a lot of sense but totally works well one way that it started is shannon lived here like 12 13 years ago before we met with yeah. her ex-partner 
We actually lived in this building that we live in now. Two levels up. Yeah. We lived. So she'd lived in Malmo beforehand, and we actually visited Malmo quite some years ago, like a couple, of, a few years after we got together. Um, so I saw it for maybe like a day or two, and then we were looking at moving out of Australia to Europe. Because we had been living in Australia for what do you think, three years, four years, five years? Five or six. God, was it five yeah. years? Yeah. Those of you guys that don't know, Australia takes. A lifetime to get to and from it is extremely remote and which is amazing like Australia that makes Australia really special in a lot of ways but when you travel all the time internationally and need to be like around the world Australia is not an optimal pl optimal place to be it takes forever my body just started getting so shredded but it wasn't even just the travel it was just sort of like Australia was time it was time to leave yeah it was sort of like the energy to be somewhere different was becoming more and more relevant. And like, so we really went into the question because like in this day and age, you can basically live anywhere. I kept really being drawn to Europe. And so we were like, okay, so what, why don't we check out an EU base? We actually oh. stayed in different places too. Like even Germany, like we'd stay there. Yeah, to sort we of really see shopped if around. That was, um, yeah viable for us. Because Max has a German passport and speaks fluent German. He's like an undercomer. You don't really know he sounds Australian, but he's... I'm undercover. He's undercover German. <laughs> but we just, so we tried everything. Like we checked out France, we checked out Italy. Like, and every EU country has like, it's been, it's sort of like pluses and minuses. One of the major things that we needed was like an international, a really good international airport that was easy for us to get to. Also an easy headspace and natural environment close by. Shannon likes to be near water. Yeah, I need to live near the ocean. I get like weird if I'm not by the ocean for too long. Actually, I, I thought I wanted to get something in Copenhagen because at, to be fair, Copenhagen is like my favorite, I think my favorite city in the world, but you actually can't own property in Denmark as a non-Danish resident or citizen. So that's sort of- So we're half an hour from Copenhagen now across the water basically. Right, so essentially like, I think I call Malmo like, like little Copenhagen. It's sort of like a quiet suburb of Copenhagen. The prices in Malmo are like a third of the prices in Copenhagen. And I had thought like, oh, wouldn't it be cool? Like, I wish I could buy that apartment that I used to live in when I was living there because it's just like in this really awesome part of town. You can literally, you could see Copenhagen from the balcony. It's in this beautiful little square. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could buy it? But in truth, it probably would be too small for us. So I sort of put that idea aside. And so I go on to block it. I start looking at apartments and immediately this building comes up and it's the same building that I lived in. And it's an apartment two floors down that's been two apartments that have been joined. So Essentially, it was actually bigger than where she lived It's before, the yeah. exact size that we needed. That's actually the second apartment that the owners before us broke through and so they bought both the apartments and joined them. This is this is the part that they broke through here. This is like one that was a wall beforehand. And it was literally the first apartment I looked at on Block It. I was like, ooh. And the timing worked out that I literally flew to Sweden. I don't even know, it's like total magic. Like I flew to Sweden to come apartment shopping, landed, viewed this apartment the next day. I was the only person that viewed the apartment, made an offer, bought the apartment that weekend. <laughs> like a weekend. Malmo is magic like that for me. I don't know why. I don't get it. I really don't get it. But everything here just lines up for me perfectly. Everything is easy. Everything just comes together. It's always been like that for me here. So thank you, Malmo. And I, I love the headspace too of Sweden as a socialist country. There's something about like they're at ease in a particular way that I haven't experienced anywhere else. And it doesn't mean like they're still fixed and they're all, you know, every culture has It's not paradise, stuff. but it's pretty awesome. But the headspace is really easy and the people are very friendly. It's a really easy place to live. Everyone speaks like for perfect us, English. For us, it's a really easy place to live. Yeah, for us, it's definitely... My dad had said at one point, he was like, I thought you were crazy when you moved to Sweden. You guys all know what happened last year, like when the whole world just went like unprecedented shutdown. You were gone for a huge part of the year and I was here in Sweden, which never closed down, no masks, no issue, no problem. Everything stayed open. I like literally was living in the one country in the world that like never had an issue that never shut down and and my dad was like i thought you were crazy when you moved to sweden and now i totally get it and for me it was just like total kismet it just was so fortunate and how does it get better sweden has been really good for us right now it's our european base and obviously like if you watch the alugar vlog a couple of vlogs ago like that's another base that I'm working on creating, which is sort of like, I feel like this really like big turn in my life, looking at creating like multiple bases around the world, which I feel like um, like a rich asshole saying that, but also really grateful that I get to like have that. And that's really what works like for my lifestyle. 
Like I traveled for 20 years just living out of a suitcase, literally. I mean, I'm still like sort I of... I traveled the last six months living out of a suitcase. <laughs> so now it's like, yes, we're going to have suitcases, but they're going to be houses. So now we can just travel to the next place. That's like my solution because I'm like, I feel like too old to keep just like going the way I was going. My body's sort of like, excuse me, I need different... I think I need things different here now. This is our EU base for now. Hopefully through this video, you get to see like what we love about Malmo. <laughs> featuring some of the artwork over here. This is, this is what Shannon does in her off time. This is her second business. She's a DHL delivery girl. cemetery in Melmo. Let me show you around. So Shannon and I just played a game of who can find the oldest person in the graveyard. The oldest grave. Who did you find? I didn't look very well. I only looked at two gravestones. <laughs> I found one from like, he was put in the ground in like 1856, but I know that they're, they get much older here. I saw one from 1326. Oh, where? In my imagination. Welcome to the Shannon and Max cooking channel. I am making a rhubarb cake today, which is actually the first time I've ever made anything with rhubarb. Since we're in Sweden and it's coming into spring, there's a bunch of rhubarb. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. So I already put together the rhubarb layer. So this just has grated ginger, lemon, and some sugar. So that's just been marinating. I wouldn't say this is a traditional rhubarb cake recipe. It's more like hippie delight. So I'm just gonna eyeball my almond flour. I'm gonna call this my tablespoon. This is a sterling silver set that my dad gifted us for Christmas a couple of years ago, which I love. They say with baking, you have to be really precise, but I feel like with hippie delight baking, you can be kind of rough. Mmm. So now I've actually got to put this back in the fridge because I should have done it with cold butter because it's like the crumble on top. Okay, so now let's work on the batter. The batter is almond flour, rice flour, but I, we didn't have enough rice. So this is a combo of rice and coconut flour. <laughs> Baking powder, salt, cardamom. I added cinnamon, the recipe didn't call for it, but who doesn't love cinnamon? How am I going to beat this? What do you think, a fork? Oh. Muscovado sugar was maybe not my best option. Well, maybe not my best choice. Now I put the eggs in. All right, I have to recruit you, babe. This is my third. First I started with a fork, then I went to this thing. Now I'm going to a power blender. Okay, I think that looks fluffy now. That's the magic right there. I've never put yogurt in a cake before, but here we go, Scandinavia, yogurt in my cake. Mmm, that lemon zest is delicious. Mmm. <laughs> Now the rhubarb. Mm, it's a nice gingery smell. Now, the topping. I am not the most beautiful baker. Like my food doesn't look like amazing, <laughs> but it always tastes good. I think that's more important. The proof is in the pudding. 180 Celsius for 50 minutes. Let's see how this goes. 
So after putting the rhubarb cake in the oven, we're having our breakfast. Quarter past 10 in the morning, I'm mm -hmm. hungry. Spinach. Some eggs, poached, and toast. So while Shannon is cooking the cake, I thought I'd do some filming because I'm down at the park right now. And this is one of my favorite things to do in Malmo is to come down to this particular park, which is literally just two minutes from our place and go for a little jog around and check out the beautiful animals that are around here. On this island, they usually put goats in the summer, whether the sun's out here or whether it's rainy or gray or whatever this park is just incredible like the life that's in here and the beautiful trees that are here is just absolutely wonderful so enjoy some footage from down here oh and then there's these little hoodlum looking things i have no idea who they are hello little masked fella not sure you guys know this but uh, you'll be featuring on a vlog you're doing a great job. You're beautiful. There's a boy with his geese. bunch of dudes by the way all male ducks shaking their tail feathers we're still just hanging out after 15 minutes he's having micro naps see you guys next time So here is the final cake. I'm just going to add one slight touch of some amaretto on top. Of course. Oh yeah. It's really good, babe. It's really good. and I are currently on expedition, have an awesome life, <laughs> and on this sunny spring Scandinavian Monday morning, we came out to this national park. This is our on-the-go to-go forest breakfast. That's some rhubarb cake that I made the other day. Boiled eggs, crackers and butter, apple and almond butter. We've been in Sweden for nearly two weeks. I'd say it took a solid week and a half for both of our bodies to uh, 
actually balance and get present in this time zone. Jet lag time is like no man's land. But now my body's here and the weather is amazing and we hope that you're happy. How's it get better? Bye guys. Thank you.